All right, everybody, welcome back to another uh, solved uh, FE exam question. So let's get to business. Here's what the question says. I have a parallel multi-path pipeline as shown in the figure below. So basically you can see the uh, volumetric flow rate is given over here. There's this branch one and there's this branch two and then they combine together. And I gave you the diameter and e diameter in each and like the length of each uh, section as well. It is known that the flow is laminar in both branches. Right, the velocity in the first branch is closest to. Okay, from the get go, let me tell you this is not one of the easiest questions to solve. Right, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Right, so I go ahead and look at page 186 of the reference manual, 10th edition, and you see that there's a section called multi path pipeline. So this Q, let's call this 3. So Q3 will be equal to Q1 plus Q2. So basically, I'm gonna have the flow rates to obtain the main branch. Okay. And also it says that this is this part is important. This HF1 will be equal to HF2. So the losses in each branch will be the same. So that should be sufficient to find the velocity in the first branch. But let's see what happens. Okay. Well, let's buy, start by the order, right? Let, let's start by the Q. So, all right. So Q. Oh, one, one second. Uh, look at how I gave the Q to you. Is this the sign it? Now, meter cube per second is assigned, so I have to do some uh, magic there, right? So let's leave it as Q3 will be equal to Q1. So V1 is not known. A1 is pi over 4, 1.5 centimeters. So that's going to be 0 0.015 square, agreed? Plus the second branch is V2, which I also don't know, pi over 4, 0 0.01 this time around, right? 1 centimeter. So the summation of these two are known. So, but I have two uh, unknowns in this equation. So it seems that here's what my recommendation is. Either you can continue this, you know, like you put in the pi over four parentheses and set that like you get one equation. But I have one recommendation. I would like you to stop right over here and look at the second one because potentially, and you will see that's the case, I can get the relation between V1 and V2 and, uh, you know, replace one of them so that I can reduce the number of unknowns in an equation to one. So I can go ahead and solve it okay and this hf uh, is given to me as f1 that's the friction factor l1 d1 v1 square over 2g will be equal to f2 l2 by d2 v2 square by 2g right there and then 2g's cancel each other um okay so now in order to proceed i need to know what f1 and f2 values are for that, um, I can I can ask this question in an exam setting, in a classroom setting, but if this is turbulent, but that's not going to fly in an FE exam due to time limitation. So I specified that it's supposed to be laminar to give you a shortcut. And what I mean by shortcut, and I hopefully see that, is this F1 will be 64 over Reynolds 1. Okay, this is the F1, and the F2 will be the same as well. F2 will be 64 over Reynolds 2 because both are given as to me as laminar. So and the Reynolds number is VD by kinematic viscosity. Okay. So now let's go back and insert and see what happens over here. So F1 is 64 kinematic viscosity divided by VD times L1. Let's call this one one. Uh, L1 D1 V1 square O. I'm not going to write 2G anymore. So it's going to be 64 kinematic viscosity v2 d2 l2 by d2 and then v square v2 square over well 2g is gone okay so let's take a look at like 64 is cancel uh, kinematic viscosity is cancel so i didn't give that but the temperature is the same between those two branches okay and let's see what's going on over here so you, you do see that this one of them will cancel and this will multiply so basically i get l1 v1 by d1 square will be equal to l2 v2 by d2 square so let's just leave v1 alone so let's see what happens v1 will be equal to i want to write like this way l2 by l1 right d1 by d2 square times v2 said so this will be two thirds right let's look at d1 over d2 D1 is 1.5, the bottom is 1 centimeter. So as I'm dividing side by side, I don't have to convert that to meter. So this ratio will be 1.5, right? D1 by D2, and I'm going to square it times V2. 
is this is 1 over 1.5 right so I can cancel this and I get myself v1 is equal to 1.5 times v2 okay then all right so this is great news v1 is 1.5 v2 so if I go, come over here I'm going to insert this to be 1.5 v2 right so let's go and rewrite this let's go down um, so q will be equal to v1 which is v2 times 1.5 right that is v1 and the area 1 was pi over 4 0 0.015 square plus v2 pi over 4 0 0.01 square right it looks nice to me so I get over here so let's do this q is equal to v2 pi by 4 right and that's going to be 1.5 times 0 0.015 square plus 0 0.01 square and then what is q let me double check that it was going to 0 0.123 so it's going to be what is the unit Z 0 0.123 meter cube per hour so then i need to convert this meter cube per second so if every hour this much of flow meter cube is going through in a second I will get 1 over 3,600 of it, right? So I'm going to divide 0 0.123 divided by 3,600, and that will be meter cube per second, which is the sinus, okay? It will be equal to V2 pi over 4, and the same thing over here. So if I go ahead and do this in my calculator, I will get myself right around 0 0.1 meter per second. I think it's fairly close to 0 0.1. If I go up over here, bam. This is the answer to this particular question. Again, thank you for watching this video and I hope this content was helpful to you.